Hi, it's Sorry Owl with Wave Oven Recipes, and today I'm going to be doing some chicken roasting of not one, but two chickens at the same time in the New Wave Bravo XL Smart Oven. This convection coaster oven has done some impressive things, and so now we're going to see if it can really handle not one, but two chickens at once. That's not something they recommend in the manual. They talk about how big of one they can hold, but we're going to go for two, and we're going to get started right now. Okay, so I've got myself two whole chickens here. I got them from a store called Earth Fair where they, uh, you know, don't use any antibiotics, GMO, or any of that type of stuff on the chicken. So just got a couple of those this time around. And each of these is five pounds each. So um, <clears throat> I'm basically going to get them unpacked and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to prep them. But I just want to talk real quick again about something when it comes to the preparation of poultry. Because once upon a time, I used to do some bad habits myself, and I didn't know they were bad. I thought they were really good, such as washing chickens before cooking them. I would sometimes wash them with just water, and then some people would influence me to wash with just a light bit of uh, hand soap on them and wash them. And you can even see in my turkey cook video where I did that. But as I learned more, I learned that's not appropriate. And so I want to again speak out to those who feel that washing meat is a good thing and let you know to please, please see the video playlist in the video description. You um, need to understand how dangerous what you are doing is and how unsafe washing meat is. But I won't belabor that point any further. I'm going to get these chickens unwrapped and then after I get all the innards and stuff out of them, I'm going to show you how I'm going to prep them to get them roasted in the New Wave Bravo XL Smart Oven. Okay, so before I get these chickens uh, oiled or seasoned or anything, I'm going to truss them. That means basically tie them up. Because since I'm going to be having two in there together, and you know, I don't want them to kind of come out and be hitting the edges or anything. I want to make sure that they stay compact because I'm doing two at the same time. So I'm going to take my cooking twine here and start tying them up. Now to trust this chicken, I'm just going to get the cooking twine up underneath this chicken here. And now I'm going to bring it around like this and I'm just going to cross it. Now that I've got it crossed like that, I'm going to wrap it around the legs. Wrap one side around each of the legs like that. Wrap this side around the leg like that. Now I'm going to take it around the side in order to get the wings and the uh, side of the wings there locked in. And make sure I don't bump that other one over there. Now I'm just going to wrap this, now that I've got the wings uh, locked in, just going to wrap it around the front here, make sure I get, get around the wing, and then just pull it around front for a little extra insurance, and then wrap a tie, at this point is where I tied up. Alright, I'm going to put my knot in here, right here. Alright, this chicken is locked in. Just gonna cut the excess. Now I'll do the same treatment on his friend right here. Alright, so I've got both chickens uh, tied down, got them trussed there. So uh, <coughs> Now that I've got them trussed, now I'll start the seasoning process. Okay, so to start prepping these chickens, my ingredients for the cook are to, uh, of course, the chickens, some extra virgin olive oil, I'll be using freshly cracked black pepper, some poultry seasoning, applewood smoked sea salt, and some Old Bay. The uh, amount is to your preference. There is no specific for how much to use. You just use it to your liking of taste. So to start, I'm going to actually turn on the smart oven first with the on off button and I'm going to do the menu till I get to roast 
Now that I'm on roast, now here's where I'm going to be doing something that I didn't think I'd be doing. I think I'd be, I thought I'd be cooking at a lower temp, but I also looked at a recipe in the uh, manual, and they cooked at 425, which I thought was a bit much for uh, roasting the chicken, but I'm going to give it a try at 425 with my recipe and their temperature recommendation. So I'm doing 425. Time, it may take longer than, I'm thinking maybe 90 minutes is what it'll take, but it may take longer. But I can only turn up to an hour. So what I'm going to have to do is after an hour, depending on where my temp is at, um, lower things down or adjust things as needed. <clears throat> so now I'm going to just hit the start button. And what's going on now, it just said pre down here in the corner. It's doing the preheat to 425 degrees. It'll take probably about seven minutes or so to get to that 425. While it's doing that, time to get the chickens prepped. Take the oil here. I'm just going to try and brush oil all over the chickens. I am now going to start shaking on some of my uh, other seasonings and spices here. So just gonna shake it on with this hand and manipulate the chickens with the other hand. Alright, now that they're seasoned, I'm going to transfer them to the, uh, what is the boiler rack in the baking pan. So put them on that boiler rack. Now really quick, I'm going to go get my meat probes. Okay, so for these meat probes, I'm going to be putting one in the breast number four will go back in the breast number three will go into this chicken's thigh if I can get this probe right get it into this thigh number one will go into the other breast number two into the other thigh so i want to make sure i got my probes correct that one goes into this breast and this thigh that way we can make sure we're checking temps real good throughout the cook now the preheat is finished it's doing its five minute countdown so while it's counting down i have to get my chicken in there i'll get the whole egg roll thing uh, set up later for now I gotta get the chickens in so I'm opening up and make sure my probes are out of the way I've got these on the lowest rack the lowest rack of the smart oven all right everything is in and get that light on Everything is in and fits. Thank God, all in and fits. Got this one string there that's hitting the heat source. I don't want that. All right, everything's in. So I'm gonna close up. See if I can get it all closed. All right, that's a nice sealed close. So now that it's all in, with two minutes to spare, I hit the start button. Now the chickens have started cooking. As things get down uh, closer to this one hour running out, maybe that last five minutes, I'll have to spin the dial to add time. And so I'll add time then to ensure that things get uh, fully even cooked. So I'll bring you back later. I'm basically gonna be, for the moment, cooking these till the breast meat reaches 140. Then I've got some more that I will try and do with them once the breast meat reaches 140. But the target at the end is going to be a breast meat of 165 and a thigh meat of 170. So I'll bring you on back later. 
All right, there's plenty of time left in this cook, but I just wanted to real quick just show you how they look in there together and uh, show you that they both do fit. And so we're gonna let this cook continue on and I'll bring you on back. Okay, with just five minutes left, I'm gonna increase the time. So I'm turning the knob back up to an hour. So it's gone 55 minutes, things are still cooking. And I did move a uh, meat probe, this one that was in the thigh on this side, over because I was getting a bad read. But even after I moved it, I'm going to show you the temps now. Basically, the one that is in the breast on this side is at 146. That thigh probe I moved, it was reading high before. It's still reading high, so I don't know if maybe that probe is messed up or what. But uh, the other one that I have in the thigh over here is at just 124. So I'll be using that to measure thigh meat temperature. And the breast probe on this side is at uh, 150. So the breast meat is getting closer to 165, but the thigh meats are still coming along. So we'll let this keep on cooking and I'll bring you back. I was thinking about maybe opening up at 140 and spraying with some apple juice or something. But the way things look in there, I really just don't want to disturb it. I want to just let it keep on cooking. So I'm going to let it keep on cooking, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so things have been going for about one hour, 25 minutes almost now. Almost the 90 minutes that I said. And we can see that the probe that's on the left breast is at 172. The right breast is at 173. The probe that is probe number two, you can ignore. It's not really acting right. But probe three is in the thigh of the right chicken, and that's showing about 164. I'm going to stop it once that thigh reaches 165. Carry over heat will take that to 170 just fine because I'm going to let it rest for a while after this is uh, done cooking here. So we're almost there, just one more degree, and I'll bring you on back in a moment and we'll uh, get this thing taken out but we're at one hour, 25 minutes cooking so far. And actually, actually, just as we got to one hour, 25 minutes cooking, the thigh reached the uh, 165 mark. So at this point, I'm going to just, to get it to stop on its own and do its normal shutdown, I just turn it down to zero. And that will let it go ahead and turn itself off, do its normal cool down, shutdown sequence. But I'm gonna go ahead and open up here. All right, so opening up, first gonna turn my light on. I have a look inside here now. Everything's nicely cooked. You can see the top got really well broiled, um, or really well roasted, I should say. So things are starting to drip a little bit, but uh, we'll just push it back just a touch so they don't drip as much. But things look pretty good there. So I'm gonna let this rest for about 30 minutes and then I'm going to um, do the cutting and all that good stuff. Alright, so I let the chickens rest for 30 minutes. I just put some foil on them. I got the probes out, put some foil on them so they could just rest and set there. So here is our final finished product. The tops are really well cooked because uh, we're going at pretty high heat there doing two of them. So I'm just going to use these tongs and basically you can just lift it up like that. Makes it real easy to get it on your cutting board. So just going to go ahead and get a fork real quick and I'm going to cut away the string. All right so I've got the string out of the way so now I'm just going to cut into this uh, chicken breast here. And cut down into this breast meat. Hitting some bone there. Came a little too far over. Let's see what I can get out. Something good for a taste test. Just gonna give it a little slice. That'll do good for our taste testing. So gonna get the camera swapped around and taste test this roasted chicken from the New Wave Bravo XL Smart Oven. Alright, so our roasted chicken from the New Wave Bravo. Let's do a taste.
got some good moist inner meat now what I'm getting here is kind of some of that roasted skin that got really well cooked Had a little piece of bone like I told you I was cutting into. Just had a little piece I had to get off there. But it doesn't taste like really burnt up, you know. It tastes good because of all the seasoning. So it came out pretty well. And so, um, you know, basically if you want to do two chickens, you can do it like this. If you want to do one chicken, just one chicken, you can do it like this. And uh, you'll probably be done in an hour. Do two chickens, probably going to take you about 90 minutes. So, you know, it's pretty good quick work to get chickens knocked out that quick. Definitely you could cook them slower if you want. That probably would uh, reduce some of the overcooking on the top if that's your preference. But two chickens at once, you can't do this in your new wave oven. They're just too wide. Although the new wave oven can hold chickens because they're tall, two chickens side by side is just a bit too wide. You know, it's not going to fit well in your new wave oven. You can't do this in your power air fryer oven. Um, even the eight quart is going to hold two chickens side by side like this. So. The New Wave Bravo, you know, something that it can do and do well. And so I've got this and other recipes on my blog at superwaveovenrecipes.com. Twitter uh, is Wave Oven Recipes. Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash Wave Oven Recipes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave your comments, share the video with a friend, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and good eating.